So how do you know if you are having a spiritual awakening? We're going to cover that right now. I want to say right off the bat here that spiritual awakening comes in stages. It can come in stages. And we collectively are about to hit another huge spiritual awakening. So there are different ways of seeing this. You might have heard this being called ascension. I do have a video on ascension and how to be careful around that. Uh, Or this can just be... You know, the whole collective raising in consciousness or at least, um, you know, letting some of the surface level narrative fall away and we start seeing the truth of things. So that's how this one is different than the one we had back in 2012. If any of you felt like you had a spiritual awakening in 2012, you know that was filled with magical thinking, maybe even delusional thinking, people who were not... You know, they just picked up spirituality as a hobby and they're claiming to have, you know, time traveled. I mean, maybe I'm not sitting here saying you can't time travel, but like (laughs) some of them just figured this out saying they're incarnated mermaids, they're incarnated elves. It was all about escapism. That's not what this one is. This one, and if you try to take that approach from back then to now. I don't know what's going to happen. Let me know. Because I, I don't think it's going to work. Because <laughs> we want real. We want authenticity. And that is the shift we're going to be seeing. So how do you know if you're having a spiritual awakening? The part I'm about to put in here is incredibly important. And as you listen to this video and other videos like this one, and you go off and you're talking to your friends, don't go off and tell your friend, oh, if you have chronic headaches, that means spiritual awakening. It means you need to get to a doctor and see what's going on, okay? (laughs) So let me put this in here. Make sure that you're not using this video or any spiritual video, practice, reading, what have you, as a replacement for medical care, professional advice, okay? So if you are feeling sick, sleeping a lot, what have you, go to the doctor, okay? Go to the doctor, Go to the therapist in case it's depression or something along those lines. Now, if all of that is checking out, you're good. What are some of the things that you might experience? Fatigue. Again, you got to be careful with this because it could be your hormones or something. But fatigue, headaches, random pains that show up and then you do go to the doctor and nothing's there. (laughs) Like absolutely nothing is wrong. Uh, Feeling dizzy. Having time warp moments. I just had one of those the other day. I looked up at the clock. I know it wasn't daylight savings. It was not. It was before that. But I looked up at the clock and it was like 10 a.m. And I went off and did all of these things. Like probably a couple of hours should have passed by. And I came back and it was 10, 15. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, so you can have a time warp kind of moment there is this general uneasiness potentially where it just doesn't feel like you're fitting in your skin anymore, right? Uh, feeling waves of chills, like confirmation chills, not I have the flu chills, okay? It's different. Although some people report having flu-like symptoms, but again, flu-like symptoms can be attributed to anything, right? (laughs) So again, we need to be careful with that. But More than anything, more than outside of the physical symptoms, it will be your perspective that will be the biggest indicator of what you're going through. If you suddenly show up to work, let's say, and you walk in and you suddenly realize just how messed up everything is, and I don't mean in the way of like, Janice is, you know, on one of her little, she's having one of her little episodes and nothing's right and she's mad and she's our boss and we have to listen to her. You know, like, not that, but walking in and it's almost like you're observing a movie. Like you're, and again, be careful with this because we won't, we don't want dissociation. Got to check with the therapist about what's going on there. But seeing things from a far different perspective and almost feeling like you're feeling the truth of it, seeing things that you hadn't seen before, right? Because you just became numb to it. You were just, you know, it's survival. It's normal. It's normalized to have work drama, to have people backstabbing each other, 
They make whole movies for entertainment about that kind of stuff. And now you walk in and go, I don't want to be here. This isn't right. You really cannot maybe stand being in that environment. Now, from a spiritual perspective, what just happened? Well, you've probably been on, again, spiritually speaking, this journey to raise your vibration. When you're vibrating at a higher level, and let me make it clear, this does not make you a better person than people who are vibrating at a lower level. If anything, people vibrating at a lower level are in pain. They may not know it, but usually they're in pain. And they're going through some of the toughest lessons. Now, some of them do not respond well to that low vibration. They leave themselves wide open for dark energy to work through them. You know, there's so much to say about that. But let's not do what we did in 2012 where we take this whole egotistical approach and say, I have done the work. And you just have to catch up to me. I'm an 11-11 person. <laughs> In front of my other videos where I tell that story. But so, again, it was like spiritual ego. And it was a playground for cluster B personality disordered people and other types of personality disorders, mental disorders, to come in and kind of um, have a place to avoid dealing with maybe what was really happening for them. Okay? So we're not doing that. But... Because your frequency is higher, maybe you're in a low frequency place, you just don't match anymore. And so you feel that contrast. That contrast is just right there in your face. And now maybe you don't feel like smiling and saying good morning to the boss who is incredibly abusive or to the uh, co-workers who just stabbed you in the back and you know it because you can feel it. You saw all the evidence, you know, you saw it all played out in front of you. And now they're expecting you to just play nice and put the facade on. There is no putting the facade on once you start going through the next, this, especially this one, this next phase. You will not be able to play the game anymore. You will find that, you know, being stuck in traffic no longer is... Uh, irritating. Uh, now, yes, you can feel calm, actually. You can have that kind of uh, perspective shift where it's like, what's the big deal? Yeah, we're crawling along, but we'll all get to where we're going as long as we're careful and respectful to one another. Let me listen to some good music. Let me put an audiobook on. It's okay. You could have that kind of approach where you just feel really at peace with things. But if you're in a space where the vibrations are not matching... You will want to get out of there. So this leads to the, the next thing to think about is how do you feel when you are in crowds? Now, people associate this with a lot of different things. But when we're going through a spiritual awakening, everyone's different. But you may want to stay at home, be cozy, right? Suddenly you want to just read everything you can about spiritual practice. You know, there's just a, like this sudden interest. And again, it's not this maybe intellectual, oh, that's interesting. Let me look into that. It's like more of a whole being experience of, let me figure out what the third eye is. <laughs> let me figure out what all this is about, right? So that might be happening, a thirst for knowledge and maybe not even being conscious of it, right? Like in a 3D way. Food, tummy troubles. I'll tell you what, with every stage of every awakening I have had, pretty much something had to go. <laughs> and this, again, this is not to encourage people to victimize themselves for attention. I'm gluten-free. I'm gluten-free. Like, if you've got celiac disease or something serious going on, I got you, babe. I, yes, we will protect you in every way we can. If you're just a pain and you're just, again, what, what's the word? Is it covert narcissist or is it, is there a victim narcissist? I don't know. Where people just really have to talk about all of that so people fawn over them and they get special treatment. We're not doing that. Remember, this spiritual awakening is all about being real and authentic. We are not, maybe not even being polished. Right? Like We're seeing a lot of that. Like Don't worry about putting on makeup before you get on camera. Just show up. right? Show up, come as you are and just be you. So 
that's another thing to be aware of. And what a lot of people during this time may find really refreshing is, I was saying before, like, I'm not going to put the facade on. I can just be me. Okay. Now be prepared. If you just being you is a jerk, <laughs> there's going to have to be some reform. Because we're not doing that either, okay? That's not a free-for-all for everybody to just go out and go, I'll tell it like it is. Well, know what you're saying. Um, do a little research before you open your mouth. You feel me? Okay. Wanting to change location. This is another thing. I went through this in 2013 where uh, this was after the 2012 awakening uh, that happened. And I only say that because like a lot of people were involved in that. But I suddenly could not. I mean, I came into work and realized just how abusive it was. I woke up to it and it was hard to walk in the doors anymore. I had gotten so used to that and had been so brainwashed by that company that the problem was me if I didn't want to be abused. There's something wrong with you if you won't let us just treat you any old way that we want and to underpay you and all this stuff. So I got away from that very toxic work environment and it was only about a year and a half, not even, not even a year and a half later where I couldn't take New York City anymore. It was a hard no. And I suddenly wanted to be around beauty, natural beauty. I moved to the Rocky Mountains. So that might be something that you suddenly feel like I can't tolerate this. And I know for me, I can't even tolerate a big city attitude. I I, I got no patience for it. <laughs> like, and that's the other thing. We'll get into that about the patience part. But you might find that you need a whole other way of living. And maybe you are more drawn to natural beauty kind of places. You might find that animals respond to you very differently. When I moved here to Colorado, I was just out hiking and, you know, had gone for a hike and came back and just walking around my neighborhood and uh, to finish out my hike. And this whole pack of deer, like a whole herd, <laughs> was right around me and just walking with me. And I wasn't scared. I mean, I didn't want to touch them because, you know, deer ticks and stuff like that. But like, you know, I, I just kind of watched all this happen and it was magical. It was absolutely magical. And again, I wasn't trying to interfere with them. But they were very calm with me and walking right along. This is a very good sign that your frequency is raising and you are coming through a spiritual awakening. Babies will be enthralled with you. Kids will love you. Not because you spoil them, but because, I mean, like literally they'll light up when they see you, you know. So let's get to that patience part one of the biggest, I want to call it a con, <laughs> when it comes to spirituality and spiritual practice is that you're supposed to be super zen, such a fake. I mean, you know, people misuse lots of different belief systems. Um, and it's been trendy to be like good vibes only. I swear to God, you're going to come hang out with me. Do not have anything that says good vibes only. Hide it. Okay. Because, ooh, I... Mm. It goes along with that whole thing of silencing, that you're not supposed to be angry. Nothing's ever supposed to get to you. You're never allowed to be impatient. Let me bust that myth for you right now. Sometimes, sometimes anger, as long as you're not hurting anybody, can be very valuable. Anger can be the moment like I went, okay, I'm getting out of this toxic work environment. Because my boss said something to me that was the final straw and it made me angry. So I took action. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, that whole idea of needing to be patient with everyone and everything goes into enabling. We're no longer doing that either. Right. We're not allowing people to tell us we're not allowed to feel things. If you don't know this, part of incarnating as a human is to be in this earth school to experience the whole polarization of emotions. And that is including the bad emotions too. So anybody who is so, I'm going to say selfish, self-centered, where you're not allowed to have a negative emotion around them and they claim to be the self-righteous spiritual person. The reason why I'm breaking it down like this for you, honey, because this, this awakening 
is about no longer tolerating that. So if you naturally find, there's the distinction there, if you naturally find that you have more patience, like the example I was giving about the traffic and seeing a different perspective, that's one thing. You're not forcing yourself. You're not saying I should do this because that's what makes me spiritual. Uh -uh. You're just allowing that process to unfold. Conversely, if you find that you are hyper impatient, it might be because, especially with the example of traffic, that you feel enclosed, maybe you feel a little trapped, a little, you know, stuck, that sort of thing. Um, But examine that for yourself. See what that is bringing up for you. But the anger and the impatience, you might find that you're, now be careful with this. You might be impatient with friends. This was around the time, like when I moved to Colorado Springs, I ended up meeting somebody who, absolute narcissist, didn't see it at the time. So had a lot to heal around that. But I thought this person was like my best friend for a couple of years. And then I had another level of spiritual awakening and healing that came with that. And that healing involved having to get therapy, um, you know, addressing physical things with a doctor that, that kept coming up. And uh, once I got that person out of my life, a lot of things improved. But leading up to that, she really started to get on my nerves. So things that I normally would have thought (laughs) nothing about it started irritating me to the point where I would find myself apologizing going, I'm I'm sorry, I'm just, I guess I'm in a mood today. And what it was was I was changing my frequency. Now here, here we go, right? If you're in a high frequency, that automatically relates to peace. That's not true. Jesus flipped tables in the temple, okay? So (laughs) sometimes you gotta express. But having an irritation with somebody, but not just because of surface level things, but really like that hurts me. And I'm so sick of you taking little digs at me. Pay attention to that. That's part of you waking up as well. Okay. Other, you know, kind of broader things that could be going on. And feel free to leave your questions in the comments. If there's something I've missed in this video, I'll go back and make a whole other video. I mean, you let me know what else you want to hear about this. In general, in the collective, there will be things like we're not trusting this organization anymore. We're not trusting this structure We're not just going to be silenced. This awakening from a spiritual aspect means that you're about to see things you can't unsee. And that might be, like I said, out in the collective, but you might also be having dreams. Very, very vivid dreams. Waking up between three and five in the morning. I have a video on that. Check it out on my channel. Uh, all of these sort of oddities happening, like I said, time warp, odd pains, but there's no explanation for it. Uh, feeling lightheaded, be careful because you can feel out of balance. Okay. Food sensitivities. That's, that's a typical one, but more than anything for this one, it is waking up and seeing the lies, seeing all the red flags we have ignored realizing how we need to respond differently let me get to a little predictive part of this video um i predict that um and it's already happening i guess it's not a prediction but any sort of um wealth flashing done We're, we're, we're done with that wealth flexing we're done um people Being cruel to one another, we're done. Uh, Being silenced, like I keep saying, but there's a reason why I'm saying that. You know what I'm, some of you may know what I'm talking about. I can't say it here because the video will get blocked. But some of the horrendous things that certain groups are doing, now we know what's going on. We're not going to be silenced. Knowing that even though we have been trained and taught that we should want to fly on private jets and have mansions We realize that maybe having a small house with a little garden in the back and spending time with our family or with our friends or with our pets, that's what really makes us happy. Learning to be resourceful 
and working together. Things are going to be changing in such in such an extreme way that as it happens, it's going to be sad. You know, it's, it's all these horrible things happening. It's like, oh my gosh, why did that have to happen? And yet on the other side of it, we're holding presence. We're holding presence because we're capable of doing that now. We've allowed ourselves to be human. We've still found our way back into divinity, our soul. We've allowed that light to expand. And so now we're not in the, oh my gosh, stop. You're fear-mongering because you're making me scared. There's no more of that. But rather being strong enough in your soul to hold presence for yourself, the people around you, the souls that have crossed over, who maybe in their crossing taught us something, showed us just how wrong things are in the human condition. And having strength for the future that we have all the power to create. So we have to be immensely careful with how we're shooting our energy around. And that energy is in your thoughts, your feelings, and your words, your actions. It's in all of that. So now it becomes a question of, You've been shown all of these things. Now what are you going to do with it? How do you plan to show up now? Again, leave your questions down below. If you want me to go further into this, I can make this into an entire series. We can talk about some of the experiences that you're having and help each other get through this. All right? We're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.